that the Mel Gibson issue has. So, Jason Isaac speaks very highly of Mel Gibson. Uh, it's five minutes to three. Uh, there's a bunch of new stuff out, and we're going to do this one before three. This is the this is the eighteen rated slot before before three o'clock because after three o'clock we're aware that people are you know doing the, the score. And so uh, House of Tolerance, which is the latest film from Bertrand Bonello, who made the pornographer um, a few years ago, which made headlines, and it was that kind of standard French angsty art porn film in which there's a degree of visual explicitness, but everyone goes oh life oh yes oh dear ah you know Catherine Brayat, and when she did that kind of film, when she did romance, my big problem with romance was you've all got lovely houses and really good, well, stop moaning. But um, the, when Bertrand Bonella made the pornography, it got into the newspapers because the BBFC cut nine seconds from it because there was a moment in it which it went, it went right over into the realms of hardcore. And the thing was, it was a film that was too visually explicit for a mainstream cinema audience and too boring for the kind of audience that would be seeking out R18 certificate material in which you can basically, you know, people can get along famously in any way they can want they? Right, within, the, you know, within the bounds of the law. So this is set in the turn of the century fin de siècle brothel where the women wear corsets and the men have pet panthers for some bizarre reason and there's what real panthers uh, yeah there's a that's guy with a panther them. yeah he's a, pan- a panther okay i think it's a panther yeah big large big black cat that's a panther isn't it yeah why would but why would he well exactly why would he well he does and one of the m- silliest moments in the film is that finally you know there was that whole thing about the, the alfred hitchcock thing was that you, the, the way you create tension in a movie is that you put a bomb under a table and you don't look at it ever again but you know or or if somebody says if a gun is produced in act, act one it's going to be used at the end of the thing well a panther is produced in act one and at the very end of the film the panther does something you think oh really you've had the panther in the film all that time for the rest of it what the film does is it has actually the same remember we reviewed x night of vengeance last week and Mm -hmm. i said there was this this sort of tension in the sleaze market which is you're making a film uh which the central characters are you know sex workers and you say oh it's great they're real you know they're really interesting people they have interesting independent lives and they have lots of conversations about what the difficulties of their job but they do have most of those conversations in the shower okay because x night of uh, vengeance is in the end a sleazy piece of work well this is kind of very very similar it has you know oh yes well we're looking at the lives of the women in the brothel whether we're looking at the way in which they interact we're looking at the the different thing but, but they do have a lot of the conversations you know essentially in the shower and there's this whole thing that bertrand Bernal is looking at this being oh yes i am arty director oh yes yeah. but on the other hand he's kind of enjoying himself more than he ought to be and it's one of those films which sleaze is fine okay Art is fine. I don't like my art sleazy. I don't like my sleaze arty. But if I've got to have... I'd rather have X Night of Vengeance, which is at least upfront about the sleaze that it is, rather than have that kind of, you know, existential angst, arty, blah, blah, blah going on. And the, the thing about the movie is... The films that it reminded me of most were Sleeping Beauty, which came along with the Jane Campion seal of approval, but was still, as far as I'm concerned, creepy and misogynist in the extreme. Eyes Wide Shut, the Stanley Kubrick movie, which is the worst movie Stanley Kubrick ever made. There's an awful lot of people walking around in masks, you know, various states of undress, but in masks and, you know, music. Oh, it also does that thing about incongruous music, music from the wrong period, which unfortunately reminded me of W.E. So I'm watching this film thinking, you know what, angsty French art pseudo-porn is annoying as it is. The fact that it reminds me of Eyes Wide Shut is bothering me. The fact that it reminds me of Sleeping Beauty is putting me off, but the fact that it's reminding me of W.E. is almost completely unforgivable. There's this sort of time-lapse structure in it in which the time loops backwards and forwards, which is meant to sort of bring you into thinking, oh, well, we're all trapped in this thing, we're all trapped in it together, we can't get out, And but, but not really. There are some explosions of violence which it's very, very unclear as to exactly how that, that those sequences are meant to be read. And you end up thinking, you know what, I'm sorry. It's pretentious. It's kind of nasty in a in a way that it doesn't understand. It's it's got dream sequences. Somebody reciting a dream sequence that just make you want to scream. There is, I think, a nasty leering misogynist undercurrent to it all. And in the end, when the panther finally does something, what you does think, it do? Does it just I'm not going to. I'm not. Yeah, it talks. Something. Like it that talks. goose in That's what Warhorse. Happens. And then there's and if you do see the film, I wouldn't. Have, if you do see the film, the very end shot, which seems to say, hey, you know, brothels aren't what they used to be. It's like, oh, go away. Is it the panther says? It's the rubbish. panther does say. <laughs> exactly, the panther does say. And you've honestly, we've we've lost a golden age. What do you think of it so far? It's not not a fan. I have to say, Bertrand Bonello, stop it. Thank you for all the emails. Some Oscar conversations in just a minute. A, a PS from an email that we mentioned uh, before from uh, Neil Gledhall. He sent in uh, an email about Warhorse and Haywire. But he says at the end, PS, I remember from your Radio One show many moons ago. Yeah. Mark suggested that Velvet Goldmine would one day be considered a classic. Mm. Has that day arrived yet? No. No. Okay. Is it is it closed? Would you think? 
I don't know. It's going to take a long time. I, if people just seem to have forgotten about it, which is a shame because I really like that film. Can I say, incidentally, there's a tweet here from I Am Bags. Point of order. Academy ratio is not four by three, which is one three two, but actually one three one three seven five to one, or alternatively eleven to eight. No, get still, it right. Still boring. <laughs> Matt in Cheshire, uh, listening to the Oscar nominations unfold. I was wondering where. 